Hi, this is Kara Tierney from Monroe Community College, and today we're going to be talking about limiting reactants. Limiting reactants is the next step from when we were talking about stoichiometry. Limiting reactant problems are very similar to what we've been doing in class with stoichiometry. The difference is that instead of being given the amount of one substance, in the problem and being asked to calculate the amount of substance that is either produced or used from that, uh, we are now given the amounts of two or more reactants. This is how you identify a limiting reactant problem. You have been given the amount of two or more reactants. In the other problems we were doing, you were given the amount of one reactant or product, and then you were asked to find how much of another substance was used or produced. So here it's a little bit different. When you are given the amount of two or more reactants, the first thing you have to do is identify which of those reactants is used up first. This is called the limiting reactant or uh, it's also called the limiting rea reagent by some folks and that is what determines the amount of products that is formed. So let's take a look at an example. I think you know what we're going to be looking at. Food. You know me. And it's grilled cheese time. You take two pieces of bread, one piece of cheese, grill it up. You've got yourself a nice tasty meal. Uh, so what we're going to do is use this for our example. So let's say you have six pieces of bread and two pieces of cheese in your fridge. How many grilled cheeses can you make? You cannot make as many as the bread suggests you can because you don't have enough cheese. You can only make two sandwiches and that's going to leave you with two pieces of bread left over. This bread left over, this is called the excess reagent. The excess reagent is a reagent or reactant that we have too much of and it's in excess. The other reagent is called the limiting reagent. Our cheese is the limiting reagent because that is what determines how many sandwiches we can make. We run out of that first. When we are doing a limiting reactant problem, uh, there is a series of steps that we're going to take. And the first thing you have to do is you have to identify the problem as a limiting reactant problem. Like I said before, this is when you are given the amount of two or more reactants. The next step is you choose a product. Now, this could be any product. Uh, I usually do not choose a soluble or aqueous product. Um, oftentimes you are asked to calculate the amount of a product, so you just pick that particular product. But uh, it really doesn't matter what product you pick. Next, you're going to calculate the grams of this product formed from each reactant. This is going to be done for the same product for each reactant. So you have two separate calculations, and I'll be showing you how that's done. We do this using stoichiometry. So this is going to be a direct application of the lessons that we did in class. Now, once you have calculated the amount of product that could theoretically be formed from each of our reactants, we compare to see which one gives us less. This is our limiting reactant, and this is the amount of product that is going to be formed, which is our theoretical yield. So I want to give this a try with problem example one. The reaction that occurs between elemental zinc and hydroiodic acid is shown below. Identify the limiting reactant and calculate how many grams of hydrogen gas are expected to form when 0.576 moles of hydroiodic acid reacts with 16.3 grams of zinc. So the first thing we do is we identify the problem as a limiting reactant. We know this is a limiting reactant because we are given our amount of two different reactants, the hydroiodic acid and the zinc. So we know that we're going to have to take more steps than we did with our simple stoichiometric problems. Next thing we do is we choose a product. Uh, you can pick any of the three products. I'm going to suggest using the hydrogen gas, so I'm going to circle that. The reason why I'm picking hydrogen gas is twofold. The first thing is because we're asked to calculate how many grams of hydrogen gas are expected to form. That tells me that's probably going to be the best one to pick. The other reason is because this is not aqueous. Typically, aqueous products, we don't really care how much is formed, so I go with anything that's not aqueous. Now, if you pick uh, zinc or iodide, that's fine. We'll end up with the same answer in the end. Um, however, this is going to be a little bit easier if you pick hydrogen. 
So now I shorten this up so I have some room for calculating. So for step three, we're going to do some calculations. We're going to calculate the grams of product formed from each reactant. Now keep in mind we picked hydrogen gas, so we're going to be calculating how much hydrogen gas comes from each of our reactants. So the first reactant, the first calculation we're going to do is how much hydrogen gas are we going to get from 0.576 moles of hydroiodic acid. This is exactly like the problems we did in class when we were learning about stoichiometry. So uh, we're going to start our problem with the 0.576 moles of hydroiodic acid. Sorry, my handwriting's not that great today, apparently. And uh, what do we do to figure out how much of a product is formed? We're going to use stoichiometry. So I'm going to cancel out my moles of my hydroiodic acid. And this is going to be our mole to mole ratio. Once we have moles, see that we are already started off with moles. We don't need to go from grams to moles because we already have moles. And I want to get to my hydrogen gas. Now I see that my hydrogen gas to hydroiodic acid is in a 1 to 2 ratio. My coefficient for uh, hydroiodic acid is the 2 right here and my coefficient for hydrogen is simply a 1. We're going to move on to the next step. We are asked to calculate our grams of hydrogen. Now if you wanted to stop here and simply calculate moles, you actually could do that. When we do step four, we're going to be comparing uh, the amounts of products. You can compare moles or grams. I tend to go for grams because we're asked for how many grams of hydrogen gas are expected to form, so I just do the whole thing. But if in a past class you only stopped at moles, you can totally do that as well. You'll just have to go from moles to grams later in the problem. Now, we have gone from moles of our reactant to moles of our product, so I'm going to cancel out moles of our product to get grams of our product. And at this point, we're going to use our molar mass. I'm going to assume you know how to find the molar mass of hydrogen. We're going to multiply 2 by its atomic mass, which is 1.008 grams per mole. Uh, that equals 2.0. 0.16 grams per mole. So we're going to cancel out our, hydro, our moles of hydroiodic acid, cancel our moles of hydrogen. This leaves us with grams of hydrogen. And this will get you 0.581 grams of hydrogen. That is the first step that we do. We have to do two separate calculations. So now I'm going to figure out the amount of hydrogen that I get from our other amount. So this 16.3 grams of zinc, we're going to start that as a separate calculation. And we are going to calculate the exact same product for this different reactant. What we're trying to do is figuring out which one gives us less because that means that's going to run out first. So we're going to, instead of being given moles, we have to get to moles for this. So we're going to go from grams of zinc to moles of zinc using our molar mass. The molar mass of zinc, uh, I have that here, it is 65.39. Our grams of zinc cancel out. Now we have moles of zinc and we're going to go to moles of H2. So we're doing two separate calculations for the same product. Make sure that you are figuring out the same product when you are doing these two calculations. Now, our ratio is here, both of these have a 1 for the coefficients, so it's a 1 to 1 ratio. Calc uh, we cancel out our moles of zinc, and now we are going to go from moles of H2 to grams of H2. That last step should be the exact same step for both of our calculations. So we have 2.016 grams for one mole. Cancel our moles of H2 and type that into your calculator. You should get 
503 grams of H2. Okay, this is step three. So we have calculated from each of our reactants how many grams of hydrogen gas we're expecting to get. Step four asked us to compare to determine the limiting reactant. So we are looking for the one that is the smallest. So our smallest amount gives us our limiting reactant. So we're going to compare 0.581 grams to 0.503 grams. We're comparing the amounts that we just calculated. 0.503 grams is smaller, which means that's how much we expect to get. Now the reactant that gave us this amount was zinc. So zinc is our limiting reactant. And oftentimes I'll put a little star with an LR. So that's our answer. Let's try another example. Example two. So here we have another problem. The reaction that occurs between sodium hydrogen carbonate and phosphoric acid is shown below. Identify the limiting reactant and calculate the grams of carbon dioxide expected to form when 60.6 .6 grams of sodium hydrogen carbonate reacts with 25.9 grams of phosphoric acid. So this is very similar. We're going to do the same four steps for this problem. I'd like you to try this one on your own. So let's see how far you can get. Pause the video now and press play when you have either finished the problem or you've gotten stuck. So this is the same problem. I've shortened up the introduction to it so I can have some more room for calculating. So step one, if you recall, is identifying whether we have a limiting reactant problem. Obviously, if it says identify the limiting reactant, we probably have a limiting reactant problem. But uh, just so you know, we do have one because we have the amount of both our sodium hydrogen carbonate and our phosphoric acid given to us. So step two is we need to pick a product. Uh, I'm going to pick carbon dioxide for the basic reason that we are asked to calculate how much car carbon dioxide is formed. So I'm going to circle that right there. Step three, as you recall, is finding how much of that carbon dioxide we can produce from each of our reactants. So let's start with our sodium hydrogen carbonate. We have 60.6 grams of the hydro sodium hydrogen carbonate. If you recall, we need to convert that from grams into moles. Now I'm going to trust in this problem that you are perfectly capable of finding molar masses. Uh, the molar mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate, just so we can check, is 84.008 grams per mole. We can cancel out our grams and now we are going to move on from moles of our sodium hydrogen carbonate to moles of our carbon dioxide. Now we check to see what our ratio of uh, coefficients is in our balanced reaction. We see that we have a ratio of 3 to 3. Our moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate cancel out and our final step we are going to find our grams of car uh, carbon dioxide from our moles of carbon dioxide. Our molar mass of carbon dioxide is 44.01. So our moles of carbon dioxide cancel out. And when we calculate this all out, you should get 31.7 grams of carbon dioxide formed. We're going to do the same thing now. So if you didn't pause before because you weren't sure what's going on, you might want to pause now because this next step, you're just going to take the amount of the other reactant and calculate how much carbon dioxide we get from that. So we're going to take our 25.9 grams of phosphoric acid and calculate that into moles. So we're going to cancel out our grams. Put that into moles. 
Our molar mass of phosphoric acid is 97.994. grams per mole. Our grams cancel out and now we're going to do our mole to mole ratio. Our moles of phosphoric acid need to cancel out so they're going to go on the bottom and we are looking for moles of carbon dioxide. Now let's look at this mole to mole ratio. We have a 3 in front of our carbon dioxide and a 1 goes for our phosphoric acid. So our moles cancel out for our phosphoric acid and notice once again, we're going to be going from moles of carbon dioxide to grams of carbon dioxide. And our molar mass is 44.01. So take a look. This step is exactly the same as the step we did for the first reactant. These two are exactly the same. When we calculate this all out, we get 34.9 grams of carbon dioxide. Step four. Ooh, I forgot my unit. Oh my god, that's nude. Okay, 34.9 grams of carbon dioxide. So now we're going to compare these two. 31.7 and 34.9. Which number is smaller? That's going to be our 31.7 grams. So we're going to put a box around that. That is our theoretical yield of this product. That means that the reactant that led to this amount, our sodium hydrogen carbonate, that was our limiting reagent or reactant. So now in video two, we are going to review these steps and we're going to take it a couple steps further because there's a lot more that we can calculate from these problems. So uh, get ready for that and I will see you in video two.